Hello, welcome to my channel. Brian Sol Costaneda here. Today I'm going to make a study, an anatomy study, and uh, with the the face of uh, Rome Perman, I think. Okay, first I'm going to paint the, uh, his skull, and on top of that, I'm going to paint his face. Okay, this, I'm going to start with these uh, fiber brushes. I have uh, flat and these diagonal brushes that I made myself just by cutting these flat brushes. The colors are titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium red hue, alizarin crimson, and ivory black. Hello, Mina. Hello, Christine. Okay, this is Trump. Uh, first, I'm going to place the position of the head appear around here I need this space for mixing my colors okay around here I always prefer use a uh, straight lines it's easy just place the position of anything and if I use, uh, let's say, some curve lines, it's going to be kind of difficult to, to judge the tilting of any part of the face. Now the center line. Okay. I think that's going to be the position. I'm stepping back and I see this shape, everything, and this, just this with the neck here. Okay, now I'm going to paint the scorn. Okay, thinking about his face, something that he has in particular. It, hello, Trevor. Hello. Uh, he has something in particular is the, his jaw. He, uh, his mandible is really big. Okay, now we can see here so clear the uh, eye socket. You can see here, this is just almost, I mean, you can see the bone almost here. The zygomatic bone, the nasal bone here. Okay, let's just start with that. I'm going to place here uh, the uh, one eye socket, the other eye socket, just like this. Okay, I have a, let's say, a trick for this. I'm imagining that he has some glasses. Yes, I'm drawing the glasses, okay? And then this is gonna be a triangle. Around here. Okay. I'm just trying to uh, follow the nose. And then I'm going to do this. This is going to be the nasal bone here. Okay, here in the middle, this is the vomer. The mouth, that means this is going to be his teeth. And this is going to be the mandible. Okay. If I see his proportions, like from the eye, the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose, you can see that this is bigger than this. That means that that's okay. Okay. You don't need to remember the, the, the exact shape of uh, the eye sockets of the bones, and even the names, that's not necessary. What uh, is necessary that we can draw uh, any skull in any position, okay? Uh, 
look at the north. This portion is the nasal bone. I used to think about uh, this like, like uh, a couple of glasses, I mean a glass, because it has in the bone here, I don't know the name, something here in the bone, like a wrinkle on the bone. This is uh, a bone that is very clear, the boner, just here in the middle. You can even feel it if we press pressure or, or finger against the base of our, our, our nose, we can feel this bone. Okay, here. I'm not gonna make details, it's just about just knowing where it is uh, the nose, the eyes, and the mouth in order to understand more uh, volume, values. The first thing that I always pay attention is this psychomatic bone. Can you see this highlight here? This is, uh, let's say, the psychomatic bone, okay, which it came in this position. Let me draw it. Okay, just like this. It, it goes to the ear canal, which is around here. And we have this shape. Something like this. And beneath this is the mandible. Okay. Uh, this is the psychomatic bone, this is a small portion. This is the maxilla. Uh, you gotta complement this by studying the proportion of the, the score. Uh, if, you, if, if it was a front view, usually this and this is going to coincide aligned with the half of the eye socket. Okay? And something that here, the tip of the nasal bone it's kind of close to the, the lower portion of the eye socket. It's not, it's not exactly aligned, but it's kind of close. Okay, that gave me, an, that gave me all, the, all the time an idea for the drawing. Okay, let's... Let's add some light here. I'm going to paint this a little faster because I just want to see this already. I'm following the light of the image. And I'm not using too much paint because you know I'm going to cover this with paint trying to create a, a face on top of this. Uh, you, you, you don't want to paint, I mean, because this is kind of a long process. The easy way is just to trace on top of the images, pictures. You choose any magazine and you uh, uh, trace on top of that. And if you decide to use the video, I mean, you gotta do go fast with this. Don't pay attention to details because uh, this color has some really, let's say, uh, there's some recent landmarks, like some details, some holes. It has something like here. I remember with this little holes here, here, and here. It looks kind of weird, but it's the way we are. Okay. 
Okay, this is uh, this it came like this. Let's say this is a how to say concave. I don't remember exactly concave. Was, this is up. This is down. This is up again, and this is full of muscles that come from here to the mouth. And another muscles here. Okay, and uh, fat. Uh, fat uh, tissue, I don't know if that's correct to say here. Okay. The ear canal is uh, wrong here, that means the ear is here. That means uh, we all, you already can see uh, some ver vertebrates here. Okay, I think it's okay. Hello, Trevor. Hello, how are How are Master Trevor, thank you for liking. Okay, liking my pencil box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> nice drawing. Nice drawing, Trevor. Oh, thank you, yes, sir. Maggie, hello, Maggie. Hello, Hassan. Okay, let's continue. You can feel right now that, I mean, these persons have a huge girl. Okay, the mandible is so huge, okay? What else, what else, what else? Okay, this is the psychomatic bone, the maxilla the mandible, okay, the teeth around here, a nasal bone here, eye socket. This little bone is the vomer, which is uh, really important okay, because it's just in the middle of this, okay? And here in the, in the forehead, there are some bumps. Just to, uh, when we paint in, 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 just like this, you can see this here. This happens because it ha there is a bump here on the skeleton, on the skull. Okay? That's why we have all, we all, we all have these things. And you can see in, uh, here this little wrinkle. That is so clear in the skull. We all have that, have that. Some person, and some persons are so visible another hand okay some shadow here I used to study from real scores when I was a student yeah I remember my some of my friends especially women they didn't like to <laughs> to hold the skull because you have to hold it in, at your hand, you have to move, you have to touch it to know this, the shape, the form, the form of the skull. And just the idea that you're touching somebody's head, uh, yes. you, it could be a, a, a woman, a man, uh, you don't know, it could be older, younger. Do you know, the only way that you can judge uh, is for the teeth. If maybe it could be an older person or a younger person. I remember I had a skull, uh, the only one that it had the whole teeth. You could tell that it was a young person. Uh, and I mean, I don't no, no mean that, that, that not the person doesn't have teeth, but I mean that this kind of. Uh, I could say that it was young. I could say that the, the skull was like kind of not too old in time. And that was kind of, I mean, the idea of touching somebody's skull that's just sometimes kind of creepy. Sometimes, sometimes. Okay, this is important. This is this, it's here. You can feel the eyebrow is just here. 
Okay, and now here you're gonna place the eyeball. Okay. It's kind of you know it's kind of, because of the position, let's see that the, the eyeball is is I mean it's inside the eye socket, but we don't see completely the eyeball. And the iris, you know, is going to be around here. Wow, that's kind of scary, yeah? <laughs> and because of the light is from the left, upper left, there'll be some light here. Because it's a ball, yeah? And the other one is going to be around here. You decide to do the same practice. Remember, don't use too much paint at the beginning. Or if you decide just to use a lot of paint, maybe you can let it dry. And on top of this, paint uh, uh, the skin. Okay. We can make uh, some reflection here on the iris. Let me play a little bit around. Highlight here. Why not? It looks funny. <laughs> Okay. Okay, with this, uh, kind of enough. It's not too much. Uh, the definition of uh, this. Uh, let me make this a little bit clear. This portion here. It has something like this. And like this. This this bond here. Uh, it doesn't uh, touch anything. This, let's say it's on the air. I mean, it's holding by muscles. And here there is kind of a p pivot. That's the reason that what we move this. Okay, that's the only part of the movable part of the face, the mandible. Okay. Okay, now let's paint Ron Perman on top of this. I'm gonna still use uh, the same brushes. Look for the uh, the image, the uh, colored image. I wasn't able to find it. I just found this image, and, and I, I, as soon as I, uh, I I saw the image, I just I wanted to practice on anatomy because it's so clear. The landmarks of the bones were so clear on his face. Okay, this paint on top of this. I'm gonna try to respect the eyes. I'm not so sure if the position is okay, but anyway, I'm gonna paint on top of that. First, let's paint the eyebrow. It's gonna be around here on top of the bone. Right here. Now the nose. Okay, let me think. Let's go with uh, the upper eyelid. That is something like this. The lower eyelid. Okay, this is the this highlight for psychomatic bone. You can feel here something. This is exactly this. Yeah, so clear. This is gonna help you a lot. I mean, we need that this kind of knowledge in order to improve our painting. Okay. 
Okay. I'm following the image right now. First, I'm try I was trying just to draw the skull just by watching the landmarks of the bonds. But right now, it's just about following the image. Mm -hmm. uh, his nose has really like uh, the nasal his nasal bone is going like up and then it's go down no? in this portion. No the mouth is around here. I'm doing the same that I do uh, that you have you have watching watch me doing another videos like making this triangle here and looking for uh, some lines that kind of align with other lines like the corner of the eye with the corner of the mouth. You can see it's kind of like yellow. Okay, you can see uh, here there is a triangular shape. This kind of helped me to the position of the mouth. And I'm thinking at the same time in this. Okay, keeping the information here. This triangle has the, uh, the whole information that we need about the face. We can move the mouth up or down a little bit. It's not gonna affect the, the face. Okay, let's mix yellow ochre, a lesser and crimson, touch of black, and white. Okay, now you can see this shadow here. Keeping my eyes, trying to keep my eyes in this portion, all this, and at the same time, uh, it's like zoom in and zoom out. I zoom in to see just this eye, and then I zoom out to see the whole couple of eyes. to reduce this. Here's gonna be the border of the face. I love this when I start trying to see the face, a human face. I don't, I don't mean about the likeness. The likeness is just a longer process. Just this, this about watching a face on top of uh, the bones.
Okay, let's continue. Thank you. I have a new patron. I promise uh, to say what's the name? Palm X. Okay. If you're watching, thank you so much. You know, you can support my channel because I have a patron account. It's just to support my YouTube videos. Uh, not I don't have anything yet in my Patreon account. I will, I will, but I don't know when. I have to prepare maybe some longer videos or maybe some longer um, process, like design or something like that. Or a master study. Like when I get all, when I get all, all of that, uh, I will let you know. Okay, I uh, have lost something here, but anyway, I mean, this, uh, like I said, from here is just the longer process of trying to get the likeness. And it is about uh, trying to copy the image. And uh, the skeleton, I mean, the, the skull is gonna help me if I feel uh, lost, if, if I feel like I'm, I'm, something is lost. Like, uh, for example, if you make a highlight here, you know that it's wrong, okay? Because you know, without watching the image, you know that something is wrong because you know now the psychomatic bone is here. And if you miss a little bit to the left or, or the right doesn't matter, the psychomatic bone is around here. And it's always have a highlight, okay? And then you know now the bomber is just in the middle of the whole face. Let's, let's paint some hair to start to see his face. This kind of practice is not about precision. No, it's not about having a nice painting. I mean, I, I will try to have a nice painting here because of well, this is my YouTube channel and it's a live stream. But if you practice at home, you spend like, I don't know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, that would be okay. Just to draw the scar. And on top of that, just put some, just to understand, okay, what is, where, where it's, uh, uh, what do we have beneath the skin? It's, a, it's an exercise. It's not about having finished a painting or spend like a month just doing this. It's not about that. The more paintings like this you do, like stu studies like this, it's gonna be the best. It's not about just finish one amazing painting in a month. It's about make, maybe making 10 exercises in a month, or maybe more. That's, that's what is going to help you. Now for me, this, uh, this helped me a lot. And when I, I cannot paint because I usually paint daily, I used to draw daily. And when I draw, I draw uh, 
from imagination. That means that I can draw wherever I, I, I am. So just take a piece of paper and a pencil and start drawing. Correcting the nose was was too small. We're using black and listening green zone. More a listening green zone and more red. I want a color like it's dark brown. It's like mixing burn amber and cadmium, right? Something like that. I'm going to change the brush.
Nix, what's your go to go way of mixing brown shades? Okay, for me, it's always the same. Uh, I start uh, uh, always with two colors and two values, one light and one dark, one from the light, and another for the shadows. Okay, it's a variation of an orange, a lighter orange and a darker orange. And just try to keep that simple. And the best way for me, my advice, that would be use a limited palette always. In this way, you, you don't have too many options to, let's say, to get lost with uh, using a lot of blues, a lot of yellows. And I just keep uh, thinking about the difference between light and shadow. And uh, the, the shadow for a darker skin, that's it's gonna be a darker brown. And on top of this, just think always that there are some, I'm gonna you do this just right now. There are some portion of the face that's gonna have more red. Okay, like here, here. If you have seen my videos, like I think you do, I do always the same. At the end, you don't see, because I start just uh, applying more, more and more paint, you don't see this reddish portion like too red. Okay, but try to keep it simple. Try to think that uh, you're painting not, not a face, any object, that it has a particular color. The first approach is always paint the lights and the shadow. Uh, one ex one ex excellent exercise is just have a cube, a small cube, okay? Paint that cube, the color that you want to, I mean, that could be brown, that could be blue, could be orange. Try to paint the cube with a skin color that you want to reproduce. In that cube, you're gonna have, when you see the cube, you're gonna have uh, three sides. Usually we see three sides of the cube. One side is gonna be lighter, <clears throat> the, one, the other one's gonna be a mid-tone, and the other one is gonna be darker. And that you can, you're gonna have kind of some information about how light is affecting was creating those value differences in the surface of the cube. Okay. That's uh, something that you can do. I saw a painter, I don't remember his name. Oh my God, I'm so bad with the names. This guy, he's a really good instructor. Oh, I remember Paul Foxton. Paul Foxton, he used, I mean, he paints a lemon, okay? And he paints a lemon and he put a cube, the same color. And then here in the cube, you see the trace, the three colors here, the three, I mean, like three, one, two, three, like values in colors, like this, this, and this, okay? And then with those, he painted them. That's an excellent exercise. Paul Foxton, look for his name. He's from England, I think. I try to show him from time to time because he's doing live streams now. And I think that's the best uh, kind of exercise that I, I found. And that's a really simple way to, to think about that, about color. And, and you just make it simple because we, we think that we are about to paint a face. We just, just to get overwhelmed with a lot of information. And we think all the colors that I'm gonna mix, all of that. And it's not about that, okay? First, you, got, you have to keep, keep, uh, keep attention on those simple, simple, go simple. When you have, uh, the values right, then you can start thinking about adding more color variation and all of that. Then if you want to, let's say, paint the face with just one color, let's say you prepare a brown and you go with a lighter, at white and at black. Let's say that's a simple thing. 
You can do that too. At the end, you can add some glazes and add more color. That would be the simple, simple, simplest way to do it. Okay, okay, let me think. You know, that, that example about the lemon and the cube is something that we do with, with uh, when we use paint the surface, yes? We're trying to simplify that. But remember, it's not just about the surface. We need to study anatomy because in order to paint uh, the surface, okay, we need to know what, what is, what exists beneath, beneath the surface. Hello, Ahmed, Nix. What kind of brushes do you recommend for painting on canvas? Okay, that, uh, okay, that, I mean, for me, I, I, you see, I use fiber brushes and I use synthetic brushes. I use both of them. It depends when, when to use it. Right now, it's kind of easier for me because uh, just, I don't use any medium, I'm just trying to apply the paint, lay down paint, blend it a little bit. Every time that I go one, two, three, four times, I'm blending the paint. I don't need another brush to blend, but I can use it. I mean, if you can see my videos, sometimes I paint with um, synthetic brushes and I use another brush like this one for blending. I'm going to do that here too. I, I used to do that all the time because I... Sometimes I love impasto, but most of the times I love a soft surface. It's kind of, you gotta try I mean, you gotta try it, guys. Mm, I don't know exactly what to tell you, I mean, because I, I it's like, I don't know what, how do you like to paint soft or very, with very expressive brush strokes. But anyway, I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, it does. It doesn't matter that. It doesn't matter that. Uh, that it's like something like. It's not that important. The important is the fundamentals. The important is color theory. The important is color harmony. The important is anatomy, and the most important is practice. Don't worry too much about that, and try to start simple, 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 really simple. Think like you are a kid. If you give a kid some colors, the kid is gonna just go really simple. And that's the way I think. Because I start and start building complexity, complexity on top of something simple. I don't. I. I don't. Uh, I, I. I don't know. I. I try to enjoy painting, and for me, enjoy painting is that if I start just worry about. A lot of things that I gotta pay attention. That would be too much for me. I wouldn't make any of these live streams if I was thinking about that. Here I'm trying to have in a good time and trying to improve and trying to practice and and sharing what I do and sharing uh, my mistakes, my success, everything, yeah? Just paint. Because, I mean, at the beginning, you're going to have mistakes. Anyway, there is no way to to start something 
and uh, and got some amazing results. At the beginning, uh, everything is the same. Kind of, I uh, see his face. I'm making a mistake here. his nose. I don't know why I cannot get his nose right. I think maybe it's bigger. It's the width is something that. Yes, the width is maybe more around here. Oh, that's too much. I mean, like, ah, I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, the only way to see if it's okay is just do it. Mm, kind of okay, yes. Oh, okay. Gotta move the, the light. Okay, I'm going with uh, some greens. I'm trying to keep uh, going with some cool color here. I'm mixing a different crimson and black and white because I don't have blue. This is the closest to a purple or violet that I can use on the shadows. You know that, I mean, I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to make a difference between warm and cool, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna, I'm gonna keep that like this. It's always try, try and error. At the end, uh, I don't know. I mean, sometimes I do something and later I, ch I make changes. You're missing black, a little and crimson, a touch of white. This is kind of the cool, coolest color I can get with this limited palette. If I don't get the color I want, I'm gonna add more, maybe some blue to the palette.
Let's step in back a little bit. Try to I'm just trying to see here on my computer.
Okay, I should use green here, but to be honest, I don't like that this green. I mean, it's kind of work here. Okay, but for here, I prefer to go with this kind of uh, blue. It's not blue, I mean, it's just black and white, but ivory black, it has a little bit of blue. And if you add this gray made from uh, titano white and ivory black, and an area is surrounded by uh, warmer colors, you're gonna see that um, this color turns to the blue side. And you can think that maybe it's a blue here, when it's not, it's not, it's, it's a gray, a bluish, it's a gray that has a little, a little bit of blue. Okay, but not that much like it's here. It's just, just, we, I see this blue, here just because of contrast, okay? But you can use this green too if you want, I mean. It depends, it depends on about what you, what you like. The only thing that you have to keep in mind always that there are some portions that because of the skin, because of the anatomy, are gonna be warmer and cooler at the same time. And there are some, uh, and uh, at the same time, you're gonna, let's say, apply some color theory in order to make some things, some parts of the face come forward to us and some part of the face to just to recede. Yes. Yes, this like, like uh, the highlight here in the nose. I mean, if I use this highlight here, I'm not gonna use the same highlight here, okay? I have to just tone down a little bit that color, a little bit, and then I go with these highlights, or even uh, I make it more, uh, add more grain. I, I keep the same value, but not the same intensity. Okay, let's, let's do that. I add black and white, I add it here, it's gonna be the same value. But different, you see? I mean, I can go this way and make it darker just with ogre, or I can go this way and make it more, let's say, more grayish, keeping the same value. And I can use this one for light or this one, it's up to you. Okay, this one is gonna be light. It's not gonna come like, come forward to us just like this one. Okay, that's, that's, I, I repeat that in all my paintings. You gotta use that, that's, uh, I mean, it's not like a must to, but if you ignore that, I mean, it's up to you, uh, idea. Uh, because, I have seen so many paintings that don't follow any rule or any color theory and are amazing paintings. And it's like, a, it's like a, sometimes values are that important that even uh, overlap on those th all those things about color theory. Oh, hello, Cornelia. Thank you so much. Okay, I wish you the best. Okay, let's continue. Okay, and, and this way I have variation of the skin. I mean, for me, sometimes sometimes I have some portraits that looks kind of one, one, just one color. And sometimes I just love to have more colors on the face. Now you gotta think always, uh, where is the light coming from? Where is the light temperature? And if you wanna just change that light, light temperature, make it make it more warmer. That's what usually what we do. 
because easy to control a warmer light than a cooler light. Everything is about control and balance.
Let's paint the eyes. He has blue eyes. I don't have blue here. Okay, let's. I'm gonna add blue in a few minutes. You know, I mean, it's not like I have to work with a limited palette. I just love love to paint with limited palette because it's like uh, it's like i can concentrate more here than here thinking about 10 colors 20 colors and all those variations i mean at least for this videos for youtube i'm trying to paint fast If I was painting painting in my studio, maybe, I mean, spending a lot of time on the painting, maybe pretty sure that um, maybe I will probably use more more colors. If I have to, eh? if I have to. Sometimes I just don't want to. One combination that I love to start with is just a uh, titanium white, more amber, and ultramarine blue. Just those three colors. I can paint for hours just with those three colors. And then on top of that, I start adding more colors. Okay, trying to get there. Okay, let's continue. I gotta think in all, all this uh, mid-tones, like let's say here this shadow, here. She has some wrinkles here.
okay, 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 okay. This is going to be a longer process of just looking for these mid tones and trying to uh, adjust value and colors, trying to make some parts just to recede or some parts just to come forward. It's going to be just about that. And at the same time, of course, trying to get the likeness, which I think is in this specific case, I could say it's kind of easy because he has some, I mean, his face is, uh, uh, his features I, are kind of uh, very, I don't know how to say, it, very, what, visible? Let's paint a little bit of the hair. Choose this brush, that's the one that is ruined, it's really stiff. Okay, now I'm going to use a little bit of medium. Okay, that doesn't work. I need to go a little bit darker here. Because on top of this dark, I'm going to make these marks. It's like painting a tree. When you paint a tree, you paint first the darkest part, and then on top of that, the, the leaves. Okay, that's the same. Go darker, and then I can go like this.
continue working on the face, continue working on the lighting, light, mid tones and shadows. Now I'm going here with uh, yellow ochre and white. I'm trying to warm this part just to try to make nose coming forward to us, pop up the nose more. But not just, just trying to try uh, adjusting that and again and again and again until I feel like it's right. The color is too yellowish. Let's mute this color a little bit. Okay, remember you gotta decide if you go with more chroma in some portions or, or not, or you go with more mute colors. It's up to you. Remember, it's not just about uh, gradation from light to dark. You gotta choose here, low chroma, more chroma, cooler, warmer. Then painting, painting from a black and uh, white image is gonna be always a really good exercise. I mean, this is not about this because that's why I'm not speaking about that. Because this uh, this demo, like this exercise that I'm sharing with you is about anatomy. That's why if you're watching my channel just here. I mean, just my the video just here right now, um, go back. To the beginning, you see how you start building the skull first. And on top of that, just building, uh, painting the face. Okay, so the idea is to practice and to know the landmarks. I mean, to know why we have some highlight, why is, uh, speaking about highlights, I'm gonna go a little bit lighter with this. This highlight, this. And all of the features of the face. I think he's blonde, he has blue eyes. And uh, right now, the, this is a black and white image. I mean, you can see the mustache. It's dark. I'm pretty sure it's not that dark. I, I gotta look for the colored image. The exact, I have another color image, but it's not the same uh, image. It's just one uh, I got. Uh, you gotta, the, if you're planning to practice painting from a black and white image, look for a colored image, then convert it to black and white, and then paint from that. And if you feel that you're getting lost, go back to the colored image. In this way, you can practice, but be sure. Yes. Be sure that you can go back to the reference whenever you want, whenever you feel 
like a euro, kind of, don't know what to do. I have the highlight here in the eye. We got a soft, always all the edges. Not all of them, but mostly. Look, I cannot leave this like this, okay? I have to soft this. Okay. Oh, thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Clara. Marianne, completely captured. Thank you, Trevor. Okay. Yes. I'm going to check out the image.
But anyway, I mean, like, like I said, no, if you want to go with like a challenge yourself, like pushing yourself, use, use a black and white image and go just like blind. I mean, speaking about color, eh? And just try to do what I do. I mean, they use, I mean, I go with the simple way, trying to reproduce, rep reproduce any skin color. And if you, uh, I mean, my, my advice that would be that you use both images. I repeat myself again, eh? just to be sure, that, be sure that if you get lost or you feel like you cannot control the colors, go back and copy the colored image. But mostly painters, portrait painters, I can I can say say for sure that mostly all of them have uh, the ability. Kind of really sure about this, the ability to paint without watching the color of the image. Because it's just painting so many portraits that you already know how to mix. And if you tell a uh, uh, portrait painters, okay, I'm gonna paint this image in black and white image, and his skin color or her skin color is kind of reddish, white, reddish, or brown, or whatever it is. She's gonna have an idea, she's gonna do it. I mean, for me, that would be like that because I already uh, kind of know. Yes, I mean, it's not gonna be exact. Okay, there's no way about that. It's not gonna be, I mean, like uh, the same color. But you can tell when somebody is, let's say, white or brown or black. You can tell that, okay? And there are so many paintings that, like, uh, I was watching this guy that I was mentioned, mentioned in the last time no, a few videos ago, David Lefer, he's a master. He's a living master. And he uh, he paints in a really, how can I say, I mean, his paintings are, are kind of dark. Yes, if you compare um, one of his paintings, you can tell that you see a person that the person is white or or, or, or not. But definitely, if you compare the painting with a real person, the painting is really dark because that he works in those values. Yes, and that's, let's say, he, that's his palette, his colors. He's not trying to copy what he sees. He's working in his, whole, his own harmony. Okay, and and that's, that's, that's the idea, that's the goal. The goal is not to copy the image, okay? The goal is not, not, it's not that, the goal is just to uh, have a, some kind of formula that does what you see here. And working from, from that, I mean, know, knowing where to manage the most important about color theory about warm and cool colors and gray colors. Okay. I mean, that's that's a thought. That's what I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? And the more you the more you practice, the more you're gonna be able to see all those things. And to compare, I mean, when you see any painter or there's something like uh, this, I mean, I admire admire this guy a lot, this David Lefer, because he goes live every Sunday in Facebook. He has a, a Facebook fan page. It's, Bright light gallery, I think. Not so sure. But you gotta see him. I mean, that's a must. 
he's I don't know, I miss, uh, uh, almost 90 years old. He's really old. Oh, well, thank you, Trevor. Oh, hello, Arturo. Gonna change the background. This kind of pinky is kind of uh, doesn't go with him. Yes, he has a, like a hard character. He's like a really strong guy. This pinky color.
maybe I have to add red. Because I remember him, he, I remember him just for a movie. I don't see too many movies. I mean, I have seen a lot of movies, but I mean, I remember him for I mean, Hellboy. It's, I mean, that's an old movie. <laughs> Let's make it this really red. I need paper. Okay, I don't have double paper. Oh, I don't like that color. I mean, well. Sorry for the noise. Black or gray is always the best solution. I don't like this color, but anyway, it's better than that, that pinky color. I'm gonna take out the image a little bit. On that black here too. That's my dog. That means it's time to finish. Time to go out for a walk. Oh, his ear is really small. I, mean, I haven't noticed. I mean, for his jaw, his ear is really small.
You can see here uh, these wrinkles are so dark. Mm. I don't want to go that dark. I mean, it does affect, I think, that uh, from the black and white image, from the high contrast, mm -hmm. the black and white image. Maybe the color image doesn't have that contrast. That usually happens with black and white photos. Because uh, I have seen so, so many of these, the, that this effect is because of trying to keep the high contrast uh, to make the black and white Im photo more interesting. They exaggerate that. And when you, when you see the color version usually doesn't have this kind of black or black, black. I mean, that, obviously this is a black and white, but, but I'm trying to tell, to say that uh, in order to make a black and white image more interesting, usually you have to exaggerate the, the contrast. And if I copy just this, like, I don't know, me, and at the same time, here in a painting, uh, because of the way that he's facing, these wrinkles is maybe too much. And if I think about perspective, this is something that he, this has to come forward, and the forehead has to be have to recede. And if I add that to to here to the forehead, I think that that would be maybe too much. But I'm gonna drive my attention to those wrinkles. Anyway, I'm trying to give uh, two reasons to not to do those, not to paint those wrinkles. Yes. And one is thinking about a black and white image because I remember when I was young, I have my, my first camera, it was uh, black and white. And I used to take photos all the time. Yes, I keep my camera with me all the time. And the only way for me to make that interesting is just taking photos of high contrast situations, uh, scenes like uh, when the sun is hitting somebody just, that was so amazing to take a picture, to take a black and white photo. I never used them for painting. And I, I just, I mean, later when I, I used to hire a model, I took photos. I took photos, but uh, I mean, those, those images that I used, uh, they used to take with my first camera just by, just was for fun.
And if I think about maybe create more defect of perspective, I could go sharp here, high contrast, and from here to there, low contrast, low chroma. But that's important. I mean, that's not necessary. It's just that, like that too much. When you paint the landscape, then you, can, you, you should do that. The important is that you can do that too. I mean, if you want to be more like just to just all the rules to the limit. Okay, not difficult to see this clearer here. I'll make it just a little. Something like that, it could, could work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'll be Marian. I hear the sentences twice or three times. Then when it happens. Funny, but I'm getting crazy. <laughs> okay, I think I'm done. I mean, I'm pretty sure there are more things to do here in this portrait, but remember, this is about uh, the first, maybe the first half of the video because it's about anatomy. Now this is just normal process. The knowledge that you have when you study anatomy, just I give some, they say some based to make corrections without even checking the image. Correction like some highlight here or the shadow here or the bone here. You can feel the bones is, uh, inside that. That's, that's what we, we want to get, <clears throat> okay? At least that's what we want to know, to understand I see so many little things that... Okay. Okay, that's it. I mean, I don't, I don't have to go with all those things. No, I'm taking the risk to make him older and older and older.
Okay. I think that's it. Yes, that's enough for a study. I can maybe add more light here. Why not? I can make a really sharp edge here. A, a sharp edge here, it would work to make his jaw to pop up. Yeah. Not here, and now I'm going to soften this edge here. Oh, I always forget to paint the ears. Well, since this ear is a mess. Okay, thank you so much. That's it for today. See you in a couple of days. I wish you a very happy new year. And everybody's just waiting this year to get to the finish, not to the end, to start a new year. Just hoping that everything is going to be better. Okay, in a couple of days, I mean, tomorrow I'm not going to do anything just to go buy some things for my kids, my daughter for my son, and spend with the family for a couple of days. I will draw a little bit. In a couple of days, I'm going to paint again. Thank you so much for being here with me. I really appreciate that. A lot of you just keep the time to watch the videos. I hope that all the videos have given you some something, some knowledge, anything. My, 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 my experience, everything, anything that you can use for in your, in your paintings and you can improve. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care. Happy New Year. See you next year. <laughs> In a couple of days. Okay. Thank you. Take care. You can go now. You know that I'm going to stay here for a minute. <laughs>
Okay, take care, bye. Happy New Year. Trevor. <laughs> okay. Bye, take care.